Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and for today's video topic, I wanted to talk about the seven ways that I have been able to sell me and my husband's vehicles, the used vehicles, when it comes to the end of the life cycle for them, for us. So one of the things that we're both really against is trading in our vehicles. And while trading a car in can be super convenient and make life really easy, Oftentimes, consumers take big hits on trading in vehicles when it comes to cost. Now, at the end of the day, some people may say, well, you know, I've been able to, you know, get a better price on the car I'm buying next, but I'm just telling you, just like with banks or anything else, dealerships are going to find a way to get their money. So while you may get a great deal on your trade-in, you're typically going to suffer somewhere else and things like that. So from our best experience in selling several vehicles DIY, um, we've been able to get the most money out of our vehicles to put into the next one because again our ultimate goal with every vehicle we purchase is to have the littlest amount of debt possible as well as oftentimes trying to pay cash for vehicles so anything that we can squeeze out from our used vehicles that we're getting ready to sell off the better so we prefer not to go the trade-in route so in order to do that there's some things that will help you aid in selling the vehicle yourself. So one of the first things this is making sure you price it right. It's very key to not overprice and underprice your vehicle that you're selling. And the only way that you're going to know that is by going out and getting a real value on your vehicle. So the place that I suggest to go to get the value for your vehicle is kellybluebook.com or I think in their case their website is kbb.com. So what you'll want to do is click on the get used uh, car values button at the top of their menu page and then from there it'll ask you do you want a trade-in value or do you want private party sale in which case if you're going to sell it yourself you always want to select on the private party sales so that's going to give you a true private party sales price versus a, an estimate of what a dealership would pay you if you were to trade it in so once you click on that private party sale you'll be able to enter in all the details about your vehicle the year make model um, what color is it, what features does it have, the mileage that it currently has. Um, so you'll need to know all that information ahead of time to be able to enter those details in. Now when it comes to the condition of the vehicle, I think the normal way of going about it for most people is everybody thinks their stuff is nicer than it is a lot of times. So you really need to kind of take a step back, um, a non-biased step back and really look at your vehicle's overall condition. What does the interior look like? Is it, you know, in good condition? Is there stains on the seats or on the floorboards? Um, is there any burns? Is there any scratches on the trim work or anything like that? What's the overall condition on the interior? You're going to want to do the same thing for the exterior of the car. Is there door dings? Is there dents? Um, has it had major damage with accidents and things like that that's going to be on the, the record under the VIN number. You'll want to make sure that whenever you select the type of condition the car is currently in after you've entered mileage and all the de de details of the vehicle to make sure that you select an accurate price or accurate range of price for your current vehicle's condition. So with that said, once you've got a price in mind that you think is fair, um, I always like to know what that is too when it comes to negotiating with a buyer so that way if they if they make you an offer you'll know kind of where you should be at you're not just coming up with the number of how you feel your car should be as far as price but you'll actually have concrete numbers from a reliable source on used car values so yeah Kelly Blue Book is a good resource for you if you're trying to price your car yourself and being able to enter in mileage and all that based on all the other details on your car the second thing you're going to want to do before you put your car up for sale is make it sparkle. So when I say make it sparkle, it's just essentially talking about making sure your vehicle is clean. Um, just like anything else, when I tell buyers when they're working with me from a real estate standpoint, if you want the highest and best price for your house, you don't want it to look like it's being lived in and dirty and just day to day. We want to make it feel like a model home and kind of think of that same frame with selling a used car is yes everybody knows a used car is not going to be a brand new car but nobody wants to buy your filth and buy a dirty car so take the extra time to really give it a good wash on the exterior you know scrub the wheels getting everything really clean you know if you can maybe detail the engine area um, as well as make sure the interior the area where a lot of people are going to sit in and spend time looking around the inside of the car make sure it's clean and free from dirt uh, food crumbs dog hair things like that if you have if you're a smoker make sure and get I mean if you have to I always say take that extra step and go get your car detailed um, sometimes DIY is just fine cleaning your car but if you've like me I'm in my car day in and day out and there's been a lot of life happening in this car so whenever I go to sell 
I will probably spend the extra money and go get it detailed where they can shampoo the seats and the floor mats and all those good things just to make it smell and look really good. Um, always a tip whenever you go do that to save some money is see if that uh, car wash place is doing any specials. A lot of times they won't tell you about specials unless you ask. Um, there was one recently, we just sold my husband's truck and like his vehicle, he's in it all the time doesn't clean the inside of it very often like he does the outside so it needed a good scrubbing and a good um, overall shampoo wash of the floors and things like that so when I drove up their detail was about $130 but whenever I asked about their special they had running it was $90 so had I not asked I would have paid $140 for it um, another place another thing is whenever you're looking at car wash places a lot of times on their website or their Facebook pages they'll have coupons that you can print off and take with you to save a little bit of extra money so again by the time you buy all the supplies and you spend your time, you have to figure out, depending on how dirty my car is, is it better just to take it to some professionals and have them do it and make it look really good? Or is it worth me taking that at a time and having to go buy all the supplies and the vacuums and all that good stuff to make sure it's really clean? Ultimately, it's your decision, but whatever you do is make sure it's clean on the inside and outside and it smells really good when they're sitting in the car itself and really checking things out. My third step for selling a car is making sure you take quality photos. Again, just like real estate, when you look online and you're looking at houses, the ones that stand out the most are the ones that have professional photos taken, that have good lighting, um, that's free of background and things like that. Now, I'm not saying you have to hire a professional to take your uh, vehicle's pictures, but keep in mind when you're selling vehicles, I've seen some like Craigslist, when you go on there and you look at used cars, some of them they're in a dumpy, nasty, greasy parking lot and there's trash and stuff behind it. And again, I know they're not buying that, but you want the pictures to really invite them to want to look further into your ad. So if anything, pick an area where the background is pretty. I'll probably insert some clips uh, vehicles that we've so, uh, sold so recently here in the area when we were selling my husband's truck and taking pictures I took my nice Canon camera which I'm filming on now and I took it to a local um, subdivision they're starting to develop it and they've got like this white um, almost like horse style picket fence and a lot of greenery so it was really lush and just really pretty there was nothing else in the background so the main focus was of the truck itself and that was one of the things that the buyers, we had so many people interested and they were like, oh, the, the pictures look so great. The other thing about taking quality pictures is make sure you take a bunch of them. Don't just take one or two and expect people to get super interested about the vehicle. My biggest thing is I want to be transparent to buyers. And what I mean by that is I want to show everything, including the flaws. So with my husband's truck, on the driver's side door, when he was at his job one day, somebody, when they were backing out, I guess got too close and they ran into the side, the bottom edge of his truck. Kind of unfortunately, the person didn't stop or leave a note, so we were left with the damage and didn't know who did it. Um, but nonetheless, when it, we were getting ready to sell it, I did disclose the condition of the truck and included information about the scratch along the door. I even got close enough where I literally like put my finger up and pointed at the scratch. Um, and then used an arrow with the software on my computer to kind of point at where that scratch was. It wasn't really noticeable, but I didn't want somebody to show up going, oh, it's got a scratch. I'm going to try to get more money off the price. We were very transparent and clear on the condition of the vehicles, including the flaws in our pictures. So I would say that's a big tip is make sure you take a lot of exterior pictures of the front, the back, and both sides, um, the detail of the wheels, any potential scratches, um, or damage to the vehicle, I would point that out just so that way you're upfront about it, as well as take good interior pictures. If you have to get in, you know, get in the back seat and take pictures of the dashboard. If you've got, you know, a sunroof like I do, you know, get up there and take pictures uh, where you can show all the different cool features. People want to see that. Just like when you look at a car at a dealership, there's a lot of detailed pictures oftentimes. So um, either use a good phone, a high quality t uh, cell phone or camera if you have one. My fourth tip is going to be to market it right. So when I say market it, it's, it's how you're going to advertise your car to the masses. So Craigslist, like I said before, is a great starting point because that's a free online page that you can post um, your vehicles and post lots of pictures. Um, another area, another one that you might look into is cars.com. So they have paid subscriptions that you can pay to place ads for your vehicle, but they do offer a free one. Now you can only upload, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think it's about five photos that you can upload. And I think it runs for 30 days. So, um, sorry, I just had somebody drive behind me real close. I was like, what are they doing? I'm at a park today. So, um, 
but yeah, cars.com has a free ad service that you can take advantage of. It doesn't allow you to upload as many photos, but nonetheless, it can get buyers interested. And then from there, if somebody reaches out through you and they want more pictures, you could probably send them the link to Craigslist or wherever, just send them, email them the pictures. So Craigslist, cars.com. Um, if you're on Facebook, that's another thing that we did. Uh, being that we're in the North Texas area, they have a DFW auto exchange page where I was able to post an ad um, on my husband's truck with the details. And actually what I did is I just posted the link to the Craigslist page and it popped up the uh, picture of the truck with the link to Craigslist and people could click on it and it would launch them out with all the additional pictures and all the written up detail um, about the vehicle itself. So yeah, Craigslist, cars.com, Facebook site. So sometimes just sharing it yourself um, on Facebook will help your friends and family be aware that, hey, I'm selling this vehicle. Um, and like a lot of our friends know that we're straight up type people, we're gonna tell you how it is. So, you know, this is the condition, that's what we know of it. So, um, but yeah, so you could sell it, share it through Facebook. And then obviously a lot of places like Walmart will allow you to park your vehicle for a short period of time. Um, and you could put, you know, for sale on the window or whatever, just to kind of get it advertised in your area. So between those things here recently, um, when it was, we were selling our truck, we had calls from all over the place. We didn't park it anywhere um, out in public, but we did advertise it on Facebook, cars.com, and Craigslist, and we got hits on all of those sites. So the, that would be a good um, tip is advertise it and market it as many places as possible. The last thing I will say about when you're marketing your vehicle is, again, like anything else, the more information you can provide to buyers to be able to answer their questions, the better. So. If people are interested and they really want to think about buying your vehicle and looking at it, they're going to contact you. But I would say, again, being transparent is the best way to go about it, letting them know all about the car. So what I did was um, when we buy vehicles or if we bought them even used, sometimes they'll come with the MSRP uh, sticker that goes on the windshield when you buy it new. A lot of times those people throw those in the glove compartments. We do the same thing. So when it comes to selling, I will literally take that out and it'll show like year, make, model, VIN, um, the exterior color, whatever the dealer, the maker called the exterior color, interior color. I get all the detail and then I'll write up how we came to car the vehicle. Did we buy it new? Did we buy it pre-owned? How long have we had it since the miles when we bought it? Um, the condition, has it had any repair work done? Have we had anything new? Like in this case, my husband's truck when we were selling it, it needed new tires. Um, we could have probably sold it, but we would have taken a major hit by not putting new tires on it because they were that bald. Um, and we didn't feel right about selling it to somebody else with the tires being in that bad of shape. So once we priced out used ones, they were going to be mismatched. We just decided to get um, the cheapest, decent quality new tire. And that was actually a selling feature because a lot of people that were in our price range, they couldn't you know, it was a, it would be a big chunk of money for them to get new tires, but we we're able to justify, justify a price increase by putting that on. So, um, again, write all that in your detail. If you've had the oil change recently, if you replaced brakes on it, whenever, you know, anything positive that you can share that you've done maintenance wise, especially if they're buying used, um, under, you know, usually 10 or less than 5,000, any little add ons like that, that's one less thing that the buyer has to spend money on is a great selling feature. So make sure to include that. Um, one of the things I did, like I said, I put new tires on my husband's truck before we listed it for sale about a month before. So I made sure to keep the receipt. I, I took a picture of it and I included that in the photos. And then I also put the copy of the receipt in the glove compartment. So when we showed the truck to people, we could actually pull out all the receipts of the work that had been done and prove that, hey, yeah, these are new tires. Here's the receipt on it. This is where we had it done. Um, the same thing when I had the car detailed. It obviously looked and smelled clean, but I showed them, you know, hey, here's a receipt to show you. I paid $90 to get this car detailed on the inside and out. So it just shows that I think that we've really cared for our vehicles and when it comes to a buyer and they're looking at something that's used. My fifth tip is going to be patient. So um, this can be, I think, one of the hardest steps in the whole process of selling a car is being patient to find that right buyer that's not going to do you down to where they want to lowball you and offer you nothing um, and just making sure that they're qualified or they either have the cash or something like that. So I think this is the most challenging part for us when we go, when it goes to selling vehicles. But the way we go into it is we know that eventually we're going to sell this car. 
the way we do our money is we're usually not in any hurry to sell this extra vehicle. We're fine. It's typically usually paid off by this point whenever we get ready to sell it and having a lot of miles on it. So we're willing to set it out and wait for the right person to come along. So just know, and you might can include this in your ad um, when it comes to the details is you know, not willing to accept low ball offers. Don't even bother. Don't waste your time. And you're not necessarily being rude. There's just, you know, there's used car salesmen and things like that that may reach out to you going, oh, I see you want 6000 for your truck, but I'll give you three. No, don't even, don't even bother wasting your time calling me because I'm not even going to entertain that kind of offer. But, you know, again, if they're in the ballpark, that's one thing. But there are people out there that will lowball you. So sometimes adding that in the details of just say, you know, we're, we're willing to entertain offers, but please no lowball offers. Don't waste your time. And that way it lets everybody involved know you're not going to be, you know, just giving this away for nothing essentially. You might as well go trade it in if that's the case. So being patient is um, something that it's kind of hard to do, but very important. So that way you make sure that you get the right person to work with and you get the price that you're wanting to get and you're satisfied with the sale. My sixth tip would be is meet in a public place. Now, a police station is a great spot, a fire station maybe in, in there if they have an open parking lot. Um, but somewhere in public, I wouldn't meet late in the evening, although sometimes that can be a little bit challenging depending on the time of the year when the sun goes down early. Uh, but try to meet in the daylight for that way too so buyers can see the car in the daylight and they can see everything a lot better and it provides a little bit more peace of mind um, during business hours when people are out and about. Um, but yeah, definitely, I know whenever uh, my husband bought his used Honda Civic here recently, we met with the lady at her credit union. Um, that's where she was going to pay off the loan and we could get the title. And again, it was a public place for both parties to meet and it was fine. The other thing you want to think about is if you're going to be selling your car yourself, um, ladies, especially if you're single or whatever, make sure somebody goes with you. Do not go meet people by yourself, male or female. That's just obviously... You would say, think it's common sense, but who knows? So, um, ladies, if you're single, if you have a boyfriend or even just a guy friend that can go with you, I highly suggest taking at least one or two people with you just so that way you have that extra security that you're not by yourself alone. So, again, just think through that whenever you get ready to show people. Make sure it's a location that you're comfortable with, the time of day that you're comfortable with, and do not go by yourself. Um, we've done this several times and we've not had any issues, but we also are very um, upfront and thinking through, you know, what's the plan? Who's going to kind of take pictures? Who's going to keep a watchful eye? We're not going to show up in some random place that we're not familiar with at a weird time of day. We're just not going to do that. It's not worth the transaction. So um, just think through that and always use caution. Like I said, if you need to meet at a bank, a lot of times banks will have security guards there, meet at a police station. And if they have problems meeting there, I would wait and find somebody else that's obviously not worth your time and the last step for selling it yourself now this may vary a little bit from state to state but in Texas essentially is if you have the vehicle and it's paid off you obviously should have your title with you so you'll be able to sign off on the back of the title make sure and date the back of the title print and sign your name and as well as put the current mileage on the day that you're selling it now on text with Texas titles in the very top kind of uh, the part that you can detach there is some information where you can go online to the Texas DMV or Texas DMV.gov I think it is where you can do an online vehicle notification so basically what it does is it takes the liability off of you because you've proven nope this is again when I notated on this date this is when I sold this vehicle and transferred ownership to this person. Then it's up to them to go to the title office to transfer the title and then pay taxes on it. Or easiest thing would be is you could just meet them at the title office and do all the paperwork there. But again, every situation might be a little bit different, but just keep in contact, keep their cell phone number to make sure that they aren't having any issues transferring the title. You can let them know once you filled out the vehicle notification because they have 30 days from that day to take the title in to transfer the ownership and pay taxes on it. So that's the other reason and why as the seller it's important to date the back of the title because it it starts that that clock of okay I've got 30 days from today they can't put it off for months and months at a time and it's still showing in your name um, another thing you can do is have a bill of sale but again if you do all of that from what I've been told by the DMV that's sufficient but if it gives you peace of mind to have that extra piece of paper where both parties can sign it maybe bring two copies where both parties have copies with original signatures, then all the better. It can't hurt just to be extra cautious. So, um, and then other than that, again, 
We'll take toll tag stickers off. We'll make sure and notify. Um, we'll log into our toll tag account online and remove that vehicle so that way if some reason they are running tolls and not paying for them, they're not going to be racking up on our toll account. And then notify your insurance company as well that you've sold the vehicle and it's no longer in your possession. So I hope you enjoyed this video on my tips for how to sell your car yourself. Again, it, while it might seem like a lot of work, once you've sold one or two, it becomes routine and you just kind of know, I need to make sure it's priced right, that it's clean, that I've taken good pictures that I've marketed it as many places as possible, that I'm patient, that I've got, you know, basically everything ready to show the car to everyone, that I'm not doing stuff last minute, and then just kind of wrapping up all that paperwork and documentation and just closing out the sale. It really comes down to what's more important to you. If you want that convenience, it's definitely possible with the dealership and it's really quick and easy, but a lot of times you're going to take a hit on it financially speaking. So if you imagine, if you do that with all the vehicles, in my case, you know, I'm married, so that's an additional vehicle per person over the lifetime of our lives. That's a lot of money that we just hand into the dealership just for the fact that it's convenient. Whereas, again, like us, if you get the process down, you're very transparent, you do your research and you just put it all out there and schedule meeting. It's really easy. It's not that big of a deal. So um, it's, you know, it's kind of the same process of, of selling a house except much, much simpler. So yeah, next time you've got a used car that you need to get rid of, just kind of think through that process and think through if it's worth doing it yourself. And odd, odds are that you'll be able to put a lot more money back into your bank account or towards your, maybe a down payment for your next vehicle or paying down debt on another vehicle versus trading it in and taking that loss. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and also be sure and subscribe for future videos on all things money. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.